Hi, I'm Kalyani Chavla. Uh, today I'm here with the Kiran Nadar Museum of Art, one of my most favorite museums actually in the world because I think it's phenomenal and it's just amazing that it's right here at our doorstep where we are traveling all over the world and going running around the museum and we have this absolute gem that too in Delhi where I live. So I will be talking about two of my favorite topics, fashion and art. So having been born and brought up in Calcutta, art was a huge part of our growing years. And my, my mom went to Shantanuketan and uh, greatly influenced, obviously, by the Bengal masters. We started our um, Montage Arts, which is a gallery, 21 years ago. It was basically to promote Bengal art because we felt at that time, and a lot has happened in the last two decades, that there wasn't that much of interest or people didn't quite understand the Bengal masters, you know, the, the, the Tugors and uh, Jami Royce, things I've grown up with. Both my parents, actually, one is the whole Indian aspect of it, one is a very Western aspect of it. So I grew to appreciate, um, you know, European art, the Renaissance period or the Cubist period, etc. from my father. Conversation those days were... Uh, very different, you know, I mean, there were evenings of soirees of people coming and, you know, someone just picking up a book and suddenly reading one of Tagore's uh, poems, etc. So it was a very different, beautiful, beautiful time in, in our lives. And that's, I think, where I was uh, inculcated into the world of uh, Deputy Bengal art, which I have grown to love. And... Uh, uh, I have a lot of uh, Bengal art. My 40th birthday, my parents gave me this Ramdana Tagore. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. It's a cluster of women with, uh, you know, with uh, kind of the saris over their hair, you know, like a ghunga. It's a very ominous uh, piece of work. But for me, it means, I think today more than anything, it's so important that women stick to each other. You know, when you're all and it's a very tight cluster of these women. It's almost like then you're invincible and unbreakable. It means, yeah, it's, it's very special. Of course, the Jamni Roy, uh, I don't know whether you can see it, but that's uh, a mother and child, which is so famous, and the Christ, um, you know, which he painted a lot of <clears throat> behind me. So, and there are some sketches which perhaps you can't see if I move the camera a little bit. Those, these, these, and there are two more over here. These were sketches. These were given to my mom by Jamni Roy because he used to sketch and then make the actual painting. So th there were at least a hundred of these that, you know, every time my mom used to, I think, visit them, she used to just, he used to just pick up and say, oh, come on, take this. And my mom and was so thrilled and we never valued these. And we'd given them, given so many away as gifts. Can you imagine? Bengal art and the Dutch paintings uh, is such an amazing uh, influence of European culture uh, that Bengal, the school of Bengal art had. So it's a very interesting mix and there's, there's always a story to be told. And, you know, there, there are, the, especially the uh, Dutch Bengal paintings, the subjects, they were, there's, there was always a story. So we've grown up hearing these stories. So Zarina's work was something that just touched a chord. It's, it's, it's kind of almost emotional and I feel emotional talking about her now because I, she's one of those people I, I would have killed to just meet her. But she, I mean, she, her journey then, of course, I read so much about her and uh, about Zarina Hashmi. And uh, her journey I think is so interesting because she's led this nomadic life she never really for her a home was so important but she she was all over the place she you know grew up uh, you know she, 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 she grew up in India India now uh, and she 
left and she had to after the partition went to the other side of the border which i think affected her very very much and after that she of course traveled to thailand and uh, japan paris uh, where she learned uh, the woodwork where she learned uh, that i'm not sure how to pronounce it in intaglio intaglio uh, by um, i forget his name i think stanley hater in uh, in paris so she she went through that journey of uh, traveling from one place to the other i think not really knowing where she knew where her roots were but at the same time had this nomadic life but everywhere she went she enhanced as an artist because she learned all these techniques for which we see in her works which is just uh, just absolutely amazing so i think her journey is something which which is very emotional i don't know where i kind of i have i have a work of hers um and uh, it's it's one of my most coveted pieces one of her works uh, atlas of my world that was a very personal work of hers that i think she spoke about her mental space you know it was a very deep internal kind of when you read about what she said about it etc which i'm not going to go on about but that work was astounding like for me it is one of her best uh, i think because it was so personal and it delved into her internal uh, emotions so yeah i mean she's definitely one of my all time favorites and uh, there's this wonderful exhibit uh, just before this pandemic and i couldn't go see it which is running at the museum for another uh, museum which uh, i'm hoping to go and see because it's one of the largest collections which they put together so it's going to be absolutely staggering i'm sure so i'm dying to go see it once it opens and we can so when i started montage arts and we had i had so much fun because you know the the kerala boys club <laughs> started much after and of course boss took it to another level and you know what he's done with uh, with the kochi biennale etc is absolutely commendable but we were all friends and they used to make these you know i remember even sanjay bhattacharya uh, he uh, he made this you know for one of one of my one of our annual montage arts uh, uh, exhibitions which is a have at nilgiri at obroi every year and uh, he made this durga for me and uh, but he came obviously for the exhibition there was an another two works that he had given very beautiful which uh, he came before anybody else and he says you know i made that durga for you because i see you like that i of course immediately went and put a red dot on it and said okay this I, this i can't sell so i still have it and it's actually beautiful it's right at the entrance of our house so it's just you know for us bengalis i mean it's madurga right <laughs> I joined uh, Christian Dior uh, in 2006. So 2007 was this massive celebration of 60 years of the House of Dior and 10 years of John Galliano. Now art has been a very huge part of Dior because Mr. Dior, he was part of a gallery, and Jacques Octu, etc., were his friends, and they worked together and were very, very um uh, influenced by by art um and the house carries that on because there have been so many collaborations uh, ever since you know so john galliano so each each of the looks i'm not sure how many looks there were but definitely about <laughs> i'm sure there were about 50 which is a lot and each model and i may be wrong about the numbers but each model wore uh, an outfit which was inspired 
by an artist work so like monet and renoir and picasso it was staggering and these are very distinct artists so you can if if you know and if you have the uh, knowledge i guess you can make out so that's inspired by picasso that's inspired so art has over the years of course i've seen many collaborations particularly um currently you know there is um daniel arsham who uh, is doing a lot of work with the house of dior and i actually love what he's uh, what he's doing because it's so modern it's so cutting edge and it's uh, it's amazing alexander mcqueen another favorite designer of mine and i mean god bless his soul what a talented uh, man he was and he had so many uh collaborations damien hurst i mean he had of course a skull you know for uh, so many years which was uh, which we still wear you know which is still there uh, in, in the queen collection but you know his collaboration with damien hurst again an artist i absolutely love uh with skulls and also butterflies that he did uh with the queen and uh, great collaborations that i feel uh happen with artists who also have a vision takashami who did so much work with uh, bito i think that was one of the most successful uh, collaborations and that took for so many years i think because also the artist who they are collaborating with there's a great understanding with there obviously has to be a great understanding of where it's going and how it's going to be portrayed whether it's a bag whether it's a a uh, garment whether it's uh, a print which you use uh, for a scarf etc etc and i think all these artists had uh, have definitely a vision and obviously there's a great uh, full, i mean it's just not a collaboration but obviously many uh, discussions and uh, you kind of uh, do brainstorming with the creative director of the house as to how what their vision how they can both translate their vision together which is very very fascinating actually so i think it's a very interesting i mean art will always be part of fashion uh, because fashion it is art fashion is art it is the biggest influence of any creative person is always art the visual of anything that's art it's a visualization so it's it's it is very very important i mean i i don't i mean it was amusing i think the jeff koons uh, collaboration with louis vuitton particularly that particular collaboration where you saw uh, a mona lisa on a bag and you're going for lunch and there it is sitting on a table you know and i'm like okay so i mean actually honestly when it first came out i didn't quite uh, relate to it i'll be honest but i think for me it was just the mona lisa because the rest were like monet etc mm, it's it's still okay if you know what i mean but just the mona lisa staring at me from a bag was i don't know it was one of the most uh, popular ones out of what uh, he did i don't know i don't know how i would feel if uh, jamni roy sat on someone's bag next to me i think hmm it's not something i would do or i would buy possibly because some things i think are nicer left on hanging in your wall but that's my personal opinion it doesn't mean anything i just feel that if if i had a beautiful piece of art and honestly i i don't think i want to see something so precious you know sitting on a starbucks cafe do you know what i'm saying i mean i i just think it's just something so precious it's not that a you know the bag costs <laughs> a lot um and I, i'm not kind of putting that down in any way but i still it's just something so personal and i i don't i couldn't relate to it let's put it that way i couldn't relate to it 
but each to their own. So the way I look at it, I think fashion and art are so uh, entwined because when you're when you're any, any any creative person, I mean any fashion designer that you can you you will speak with, you see their mood boards. Somewhere down the line, there is always maybe a piece of art as a as some sort of inspiration. Um, most artists, most fashion designers I know have that. You know, there's a, an object of art. You know, it could be a sculpture, it could be a painting, it could be anything. But you know, fashion uh, is art. The creativity that comes from fashion, it's art. It is so, it is just such a strong influence. Where do you find your inspiration from? From art. I mean, I, I have been a designer of accessories or whatever. Where did I find my inspiration from? Definitely from art. You know, so I think art and fashion are, they're just, you know, they're entwined together. Fashion is art.